Welcome back to M Hood Fishing, everybody. Doing things a little different tonight. It is the full moon. I didn't mean to be out here and fish the full moon because it's not my favorite time to fish for a lot of reasons. And all those reasons acclimate to the fishing sucking, right? But in some, oh, look at that, look at that. We're already getting a bite. Oh, I'm blinding you too, hold on. So I meant to come out in the middle of the day today. That's what I wanted to do. That's what I wanted to do yesterday. But I'm at the mercy of the weather always, right? So last two days after I got this bait, I couldn't fish because of weather, rain. And that was the case today, but is, that is not the case tonight. So it is after midnight. The full moon is pretty high in the sky, but not at the highest point it's going to be at. What I'm actually doing, like the title of the video says, I'm shark fishing. Maybe I'll catch catfish. Maybe there'll be saltwater cats. Maybe there'll be freshwater cats. We still have a really good salinity count in the Mississippi River where I'm at. So there should still be bull shark. Bull shark every summer, if the river's low and the salinity count can come up because of the river being low and it's hot, right? They come up the river every summer to feed the pups historically big bull shark have been caught in the Mississippi River and I mean big and they've been historically caught really far north but typically where I'm at it's the pups they're not very big the immature bull shark that come up to feed and they're not gonna go all the way up to Illinois or something right maybe your bigger bull shark get adventurous and go really far north but this area is going to be just chock full of pups now they can get sizable but they're still going to be undersized as far as keeping goes i may be i think the biggest bull shark pup i've caught was around 40 pounds but typically they're a lot smaller than that i mean that's still an immature bull shark 40 pounds we're probably going to be getting them like this maybe like that if we get them at all so why am i talking about shark during the full moon well I don't want to go on and on about what I dislike about fishing the full moon, tides and whatnot. I'm just briefly, I will say about tides. I'll talk about tides. Full moons make for bigger high tides and lower low tides. And that means current. Down here where I live, where I fish, a really low tide can be bad. A really high tide can be bad. And the fishing can just suck. You know, the current can be hard to face too much of it but we're on the river and we got to make a video and we have we stand a good chance of getting a shark and there's a story that I want to tell you about that why I think that in the year 2000 I was traveling with this girl that I was dating at the time through Big Sur on the west coast California started a just north of LA got into Big Sur we were stopping at certain places along the way state parks and other places went all the way up as far as Half Moon Bay and there's a look at this there's an interesting interloper on the lens a bug making it for a creepy video while I was there I was fishing that was the point of this trip to travel up one and fish certain places. I did freshwater fishing, but we're most, mostly talking about my saltwater adventures in California. This was the year 2000, just after Y2K turned out to be a dud. Might be getting a bite on my big bait. So it's a big bait and a small bait. I'm gonna back up a little bit. This rod with the silver tape is getting hit. So back then, I was really, really into sockele fishing and carp and buffalo fishing. That's what I was mostly doing. We traveled from Texas to California from Dallas. I was doing a lot of crappie fishing in Dallas at the time and buffalo and carp fishing. So I was really, really new to the saltwater. Not like I am now. I was very young, right? This was back when the internet was just starting. 
there wasn't much you could learn from the internet back then but you could i was learning about fishing stuff i didn't know anyway on the internet i was using it then but you can only go so far with it so i didn't know a lot about fishing saltwater and a lot of the freshwater in california i didn't know a lot about fishing in california and it was not easy to get that info right there with your fingertips this is before cell phones before everybody had a cell phone they were still kind of the size of a brick right they were still analog they weren't digital still getting a bite on the rod with the silver tape that was back when staying at state parks in california may maybe they seemed expensive at the time but they were a lot cheaper per night than they are now it was twenty dollars a night to camp at a state park then which i considered very expensive compared to where i was coming from in texas but they were right on the beach and they were chill except for all the raccoons wanting to take food from you which they were chill too but there was just a lot of them every night like about 20 of them line up outside your campground while you're cooking waiting thinking you got cookies or something right a bit like the alligators here sometimes you know asking for popcorn and chicken still getting a bite on the big bait is it getting serious are you going to interrupt me more than you are already we don't know so we're probably getting harassed by gaff top you know sail cat i think this was probably the last full moon of the year that's going to be worth fishing because it's still summer sort of down here water temps are still good once once we get into colder water temps the full moon's going to have a real adverse effect on fishing the river anyway right but you can still catch fish during the full moon it's just probably not going to be the most spectacular experience you've ever had however when i was traveling on one and i was trying to learn about fishing by asking people that you know tackle shops and people I, I ran into this was during a full moon and fishing was absolutely horrible I was buying bait I was trying different things and I was only catching garbage when I caught something like little tiny like like the equivalent of a, of a hardhead but on the west coast and then little tiny uh, rays nothing special right but I kept running into people especially during the night of the full moon that were out looking for shark. They never caught any, but that's what they were doing. And all up and down the coast as I traveled, I ran into people who talked about how they loved fishing from piers and other places at night during the full moon for shark. I've tried it here on the Gulf Coast and I've not caught a shark during the full moon yet. I don't know if this is just a California, you know, a West Coast thing. I've had this conversation with a few different people over the years, but not many. Have you ever done well fishing for shark during the full moon? Was it just that time when I was traveling that I met people who thought that's what, what, what would work? That you would 100% bang into a bull shark. What they were talking about is shark like to hunt up around these piers and that's true they do under fishing piers whoa we're still getting that hit and during the full moon they get even more hunty right some people say that the reason why you don't do good fishing on a full moon is because the fish are too busy hunting live bait is that what the shark were doing there in california perhaps so that's what we're out here doing, seeing if we can get a shark with this skipjack. We're using steel leader. We're using one small bait and one big bait, that skipjack head. So maybe we're gonna get something because we're getting bites. Both rods have had bites, which is a good sign. Okay, what do I feel about the moon, the full moon? How do I catch fish? Because I have come out and caught fish on the full moon. I typically, will stay away from the rise or the set. Fishing usually sucks when it starts to come over the horizon or it's about to set. So that's why I choose to, to come out at midnight tonight because it's already pretty high up. 
and that's why I would choose during the day to go out and look for fish during solar noon because it's it should be up by then right and not affecting things so much seems to affect things at the rise or the set and that can be sunrise and sunset too so I usually do better I'm not saying it's like golden 100% spectacular during the middle of the day or the middle of the night during the full moon I say I say I'm more likely to catch and that's when the best part of, of my fishing is so it's not like it's the best fishing I've ever had it still sucks it's still tough but I find fish biting at these times during the full moon plus it's just kind of cool to be out here I think we're gonna get something I've got you on the tripod but I'm not gonna keep you there just doing things a little different tonight so I really enjoyed my California trip back then it was a long time ago but the fishing absolutely sucked somewhere on some lake in the middle of the desert in California I ended up catching channel cat I went all the way up a trail up the Kern River to the point where I was stumbling on bears looking for trout and I didn't catch trout well, I'm a much better fisherman now than I was then I know a lot more I want to go back to California I know a lot of people have already written California off their bucket list they don't want anything to do with it they want it to fall into the ocean I'm not quite there probably never will be there I'm not trying to argue anything about California I think California has a lot of problems I think it's very very expensive way too many taxes fuel is way too high there's a lot of bad things I can say for California crime and everything but I think California is still worth saving if you will I think California has a lot to offer it's a very beautiful state very beautiful coastline just the nature is just phenomenal so are the forest fires <laughs> so are the crime the crime rates and the, the car chases whoa if you like car chases you don't even have to go there just look on YouTube you can see them live almost every day in LA if you like stepping in it go to San Francisco you can step in it I've been to SF before before I, I went to California to do this fishing trip with the girl oh we're just we're getting a bite on the other rod the one that's all dark I had traveled I hitchhiked to California in the mid 90s and I went to SF to meet up with some friends I stayed there for about a month I didn't really like it because it was too much of a party atmosphere for me that that if you could believe that it was just too much for me I was just like oh my goodness I saw a fight every night every day it was just like way too much too much going on I, I did enjoy myself but once I, I got out of there and was traveling somewhere else I was pretty happy to be traveling somewhere else however there are other parts of California that I like more than SF I definitely like Big Sur I'm a big fan of Santa Cruz and a bunch of other small beach towns along Big Sur before you get up to Half Moon Bay and then there's a lot of California that I would like to explore like Northern California for sure and there's species that I know about now that I didn't know then that I want to go catch it's a lot to ask of the world right because it's expensive I mean it's a lot to ask of me to go do that and the world because I you know it's expensive to go there but I think it can be done van life right live out of the van and just like put up with high gas prices maybe diesel maybe not and stay out of the areas where you're gonna just turn a corner and find trouble like nothing right find trouble like you find a stop sign it's just right there stay away from those places like Oakland SF certain parts of LA because I think LA whereas I, I'm 
the Bay, the cities in the Bay Area, San Francisco, Oakland. I've had my fill of those places, and they're far worse than they were in the 90s when I traveled through them. However, LA has some interesting things to offer, I think, fishing wise. Oh, we're, we might be pulling a fish in while you're still on the tripod. Yeah, there's all kinds of species. There's a monkey faced eel. I really want to go fish for them. Now, I would have to go to Northern California or the Oregon coast to find them. But, yeah, crazy looking fish and a weird. Like you just walk up to a hole during low tide just to drop a hook down there on the line with some squid, pop, pop, jig it, pull this thing out of the skinny hole and it's like, whoa, I can't believe that big fish was down in that hole. Or get him out of a tide pull, tidal pool. You know, it's kind of an adventurous thing walking along the beach during low tide, climbing over rocks and stuff, finding weird crevices. And you're like, is there a fish down in there? Because that's where they're going to be hiding, right? there in low tide. And then there's like the, what, the spotted bay bass. That's like a, a fish that you can get on bass baits. Around in marinas and stuff like down and around L.A. and San Diego. There's a rock fish. There's, there's all kinds of fish. Now the thing about bank fishing for saltwater fish in California seems like you rarely bang into a monster fish. They all seem be average like this the species right but if you get off the coast like on a boat or a yak you can get into bigger fish but of course you know there's all these california problems but there's all other things in california to enjoy well it's just something i want to do right eventually but first i gotta like find five hundred dollars and go take a two-day class here i just victor manning the driving school because you gotta go if you never had your driver's license such as myself you gotta go to a, a driving school and take a two-day class but they do have adult classes otherwise it would be very humiliating to sit there for how, how many ever days surrounded by 14 year olds or 16 year olds when you're in your 50s well, yeah, I've never had my driver's license and like it's just humiliating to be studying for your driver's license surrounded by kids. So that's not the case. So I was talking to someone about it that works there and he said, yeah, we have a lot of immigrants. So they got a lot of adult immigrants. So there's a lot of adults like myself that have never had a driver's license, but it's because they never had it in this country because they're new here, right? So that's what's up so five hundred dollars for two days and that includes a driving test like getting behind a wheel and then a written test five hundred dollars that's what you got to come up with not to mention everything else after that that you got to pay for and then we got to find a van this is like the worst economy to be looking at a used vehicle especially if it's one you want to live out of or something right the shittiest used vehicles are so expensive right now. But we're looking at like, you know, sprinters, just like decent vans that aren't too old, either a diesel or, you know, the Ram one. The more, there's a lot of different vehicles that look like a sprinter, and then there's the, including the Ford Transit, the big one, but there's a small Ford Transit used one that they want. 5,000 or maybe they take less for that I've been looking at but it's the smaller one really really small you like this down in there like you if you were a hobbit it would be perfect for you but I'm not a hobbit so are we gonna get a fish maybe I should take you off there I was about to say I can't believe I just talked to the camera for 19 minutes but then I realized oh I could believe that I'm surprised it didn't go longer because well so I think this is probably a gaff top and he's been messing with it for a while causing it to just drift even more there's not much of a current right now but I expect it to pick up I think we might have something a fish is a fish right 
there's no guarantee that oh yes we do have some no guarantee that we're going to get a bull shark tonight i just really wanted to tell that story i was thinking about that trip and how i wanted to basically redeem myself i want to go back and have better fishing experiences in california is what i want to do that's what's up let me tell you that's totally what i'm talking about like have you ever went somewhere that was far and special and you wanted to fish but you just were stuck in the hotel because it was raining or it was a full moon and you couldn't none of the tides were right or there was something like an earthquake or a tsunami like some something out of your control or you just you know it's one of those things where you'd planned it for months and it just turned out luck of the dice it was not the right time to be there and you were in this foreign place or this faraway place having to one day pack up and leave without the memories you set out to obtain that means you got to go back so yeah you're right i totally think california is worth saving but geez what you got to do to save that state you'd have to have the means to go there and survive because it's so freaking expensive you know like a crappy house in a bad area can be about a million dollars a lot of money right more than what you would expect it to be and everything else and then all these crazy laws that keep passing that make like my sort of lifestyle and probably your kind of lifestyle this outdoors thing harder to do more expensive to do they just i think they want to run the rednecks or the country boys or the outdoorsmen the fishermen they want to run them out of the state it seems like with some of the things they come up with however a way you change a state like that is if you have the means to go and you don't vote like they vote you go there and you don't vote like they vote you vote like you vote wherever you're from but you got to put up with a lot of stuff right so it's a big ask right it's a big ask to save california but come on america i think it's worth it if you like forest fires and earthquakes and stuff which i don't mind so much they got other good things that is back out there i don't know how long we're going to keep this up tonight guys because i have a pizza at the house that i haven't got into yet and i haven't had dinner and i'm, I'm quite hungry I'm looking forward to slamming that pizza in the oven and enjoying it in front of my dogs to their chagrin no matter what the title stays shark fishing i don't say anything about shark catching but we're getting another bite and it's on that little bait i put out maybe it's a gaff top night i mean come on are you surprised because i'm not i'm happy that we're catching something but i think if i would have started a lot earlier when it just finished raining right before sunset that it would have sucked i think this is what i absolutely had to do i had to come out right after midnight it means that i'm probably not going to be able to because i don't have any video coming at 4 a.m in a little bit this is it so this is probably going to come late so that's right we don't have a, all the time in the world if you want to think about my post time like my work the editing of this video because that is happening right after this i do this a lot i come out i shoot a video i take it home i edit it and i upload it i may schedule it or i may publish it but this is going to be probably just straight uploaded which means the members aren't going to be able to see this before any body because it's going to go straight out because this is probably going to be late it's probably going to come out just after 4 a.m that's when i like to schedule things 4 a.m so i guess i need to pick a cap a time to call it on 
it is 12:32 right now so we're not doing bad i've been wanting to do the van life thing for a while i don't see my opinion changing i don't see all of a sudden me wanting to have an rv i would rather have a van it's easier to stealth to do the stealth thing in a van you can get around a lot easier you can park easier than you can with the rv easier to drive the van you don't always look like you're living out of it to everybody you just kind of pass through anonymously and one of the things that i have been wanting to do that i haven't done in a quite long time is travel to somewhere where they don't know my name it's kind of nice i like people waving at me i mean it's nice and people saying hi at the store people i don't know especially when i go to a big store like walmart and someone comes around the corner and says hey how you doing they know me or whatever but it's kind of nice going to a place where they don't know your name and you know new places new new adventures stuff like that just kind of waking up somewhere new all the time it's it's fun it's not for everybody but it is for me and I haven't done it in a while I miss it small baits getting hit again I just put it back out there I actually just put both of them back out because both of them had no bait it's another headpiece for the big bait and that's a body piece for the smaller bait that's look at that getting hit like crazy let's see if we can set it that might be another gaff top i mean it's hitting like one right you can do the strike with the octopus as opposed to circle hooks if this was a circle hook and I tried that I would be taking it away from the fish I think I got them but maybe not I don't feel much but whatever if it's empty I'll put it back out oh look at this I just got this bait back out because yes it was empty and we're getting a hit on the big bait Let's just make sure I've got a tight line here before I forget about it and walk away because I think we getting some kind of action on the big bait could be a half top tearing at it again that's probably how we lost it the first time just these little gaff top love to tear up your big baits oh did, did we get it that was a that hit unlike a gaff top dang should have just let him have it I thought that was the bully we were looking for Ugh. okay so I've got a big bait back out there and now we're getting a hit on this bait oh and we're getting a hit on the big bait look at that look at the big bait go like some serious stuff is going on here with this big bait and it's it, it's kind of a double peck peck action going on here we got a we have a slack line with the big bait look at that look at that something really really tearing at that big bait but is it a big fish or a little gaff top look at it look at it really pulling down we're just gonna let them let them have it i'm gonna watch because i think we're gonna be able to set the hook on this that might be just some annoying little gaff top tearing at my big bait let's see if we can get this with the this six octopus oh 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 i don't know are you my bully i don't think so bulls don't mess with your bait that much before they hit here we go we got us a, a gaffy here on the this rod oh give me a good fight good number of head shakes i'm pretty sure this is a gaff top And yes, sir. 
Oh, we're not getting blessed with the big ones. They do get a lot bigger than this. Last time I fished here, this is what was happening. It's just these little guys. It was better than nothing, I guess, during a full moon. It's a nice full moon. You can see everything. Not much to see besides the ships and the rocks and the willows. I've seen, I think I saw one bat earlier fly by. It's kind of nice. Sometimes you see bats on the west bank here. Not tons of them, but it'll be solitary bat, bats flying around, right? Something's really messing with that big bait, but I don't think it's a monster. So we'll go ahead and freshen this up. Only had so much skipjack, and we're going through quite a bit of it. We've gone through most of the head pieces except for that one left. It's the smallest one. Still getting a hit on that big bait. Hey, are we going to get even one bull shark tonight? I've been in this scenario before on the river watching what I was assuming was a small cat or gaff top, small gaff top really, messing with my big bait and all of a sudden it just changed. So I think what can happen is that there'll be a small fish messing with this big bait and it'll attract the attention of a bigger fish such as a bull shark. And then all of a sudden, I don't know. I think it's just, let's see what, what we got here. We've got a, we're, we're hooked up. Is it kind of a big fish? We got a gaff top? Or do we have a, maybe we have a, got something different here. This don't feel like a gaff top. We might have a big eel. I mean, uh, not an eel stingray could have a blue cat but it's not fighting quite like a blue cat should fight I'll get up on the tree here it's got a lot of there is some head shakes right there maybe let's just get it up here could be a kelpie for all i know actually i think the rod would have broke if it was a kelpie oh my goodness that's it's the biggest gaff top i've caught in a few days here and he didn't swallow the hook but almost look at the size of that that's a good size one if i didn't have pizza yeah because i'm not gonna go home cut a fish eat pizza and edit a video tonight so we're gonna make it easy on me we're gonna get him off we're gonna unhook him and let him go we're going to put another big bait out is what we're going to do. That is if we can get an opportunity to unhook this fish because we, we've got something going on on the other rod. There we go. Slowly trying to get down here to show you something. The rocks are very slippery because the tide is out exposing a lot of slipperiness. See, when you're up there at the tree where the rods are, looking at the edge of the water right here, it looks all speckled. What's going on is there's a lot of small shrimp right in here. All along these rocks. A lot of times, the shrimp will be running thick in the river during the full moon. And that's true in other places. Oh, oh, let's get up out of these slippery rocks. We're getting a hit. Yeah, this is a small bait. Probably another gaff top. Oh, he's shaking my rod like crazy. Oh, now we got a double shake shake. Both rods getting hit. We're just going to watch for a sec before I freak out and do anything. So shrimp is probably something that a lot of people are doing right now at different places here in southeast Louisiana. They're busy wearing out their arms, throwing the cast net. 
the they're not trying to catch the shrimp that are there may be some people trying to get river shrimp tonight but mostly they're uh they're trying to get the other shrimp so this is september's full moon right and i'm thinking next month's october's full moon we're not gonna have this we might come out and try see what we do if the weather's good enough good enough for us to come out but i'm thinking by the time we get to october's full moon that we are not gonna have bull shark in the river i'm i'm thinking i'm hoping that things change by then by the end of october anyway we're still getting both baits harassed it's just it's just what you got to put up with right now here this stretch of the river a good ways oh 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 you gaff top was getting serious there oh you go just a good a little bit above new orleans and things can be totally different probably just snagged a gaff top here i don't mean literally snagged it but that's what i just set the hook on yep i feel those head shakes those gaff top head shakes it's better than nothing but it's it's not what i yeah you don't always get what you want Got a good fight to it though. I'm gonna turn on some more light. Is this is this a bigger gaff top or wow, it's just really putting up a good fight. More than I thought it would. It's probably not just a slightly bigger one or it's Yeah, slightly bigger. Wow, the bigger ones are here. Look at that. That's probably what's going on with the big bait, too. Looks like we're going to have us a long video without a bull shark just catching gaff top. But, yeah, sometimes that's what you get. I'm going to let, let it go. Oh, that's probably a gaff top still, but that was a serious takedown. 